three, two, one. Rick, how's it going, man? Good, good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for coming out and uh, doing the podcast. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, no problem, dude. So I must have stood in front and taken pictures in front of one of your murals down in Downey. Yeah. Uh, for the past three years, and I'm so glad that I get to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That that was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I got to do that mural thanks to Amber. Uh huh. Yeah. It's it's a magnificent piece. We're just looking at uh, different pictures of of the mural down in yeah. in Downey. Can we pull it up so that everybody can? Take a look at it. And then also we have to touch on uh where you got your uh your artist name. Oh yeah, yeah. As well. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. We had a, there, it is. there we go. Oh now it's working. Yeah. There we go. Damn it, Facebook. Meta. Right, cool. Yeah, there was like. Uh, oh, one right here. oh, okay, that's a full one, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, there we go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So I, in front of that one for a few years, and then also at the new location. Yeah. For yeah. donuts too, and we were just there this morning, oh, nice. um, and we took a couple of pictures. I forgot. Did I did I post them? No, you didn't. No, I'll post them after this, so you guys can go to my story and check Wait, it out. Do you remember when you did this? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, a, yeah. Jesse, Jesse helped me do that one. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. You were telling me that. How long did it guys take you to do that? A couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of hours. Yeah, just a couple of hours. I mean, I wasn't a lot of painting. The stuff was already pink. So mm -hmm. it was just, you know, the outlines and filling in. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we knocked it out pretty quick. And this is your design? Yeah, this is my design. Yeah. How did you get the inspiration to do the design? They told me what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They gave me some ideas, and then I did some sketches. And I don't, I don't even think I did any changes to it. I think they liked the drawing, and we just went with that. But then when Jesse was there helping me, we freestyled a few things. So there's a lot, a, a few hidden things in there. Okay. Let's see if you can spot them. Like hidden, like hidden things. Yeah. You do? Yeah. I was like, where? <laughs> on the on the top right corner. Oh, your panda right here. Oh. And next okay. to it, there's an avocado for Jesse. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Shit! I didn't even know. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I was Look at that. there with you guys. Yeah, we added those at, uh, at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like verbal like communicate that yeah, like, yeah. oh, we're gonna we're gonna throw some hidden uh, yeah Jesse's treasures the in that, there? Yeah, Jesse's the one that gave me the idea. <laughs> <laughs> he would too. Yeah. I, I I can I can see him uh, coming up with that idea, but yeah, dude, this is awesome, bro. Like I remember the, my first impression. Of looking at this and i'm like this is got to be like one of the coolest things thank you yeah um we had like hundreds of people come and take oh pictures. yeah they're always taking pictures yeah even if you just google it if you what did you google amber um just donna's um donna's downy mural mm -hmm. and it popped up a bunch of them and people taking pictures in front of it i mean I think it was even like in news articles, things like that. So. Yeah, it was in news articles. I think it came out. A, a lot of influencers would go yeah. and take pictures. Mm -hmm. I thought when you said like hidden stuff, I thought you were gonna have like a like an alien in there or something. <laughs> I mean, consider Jesse, yeah. right? I was looking for three three sets of tits. I was looking for. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. <laughs> but uh, oh, this is cool, man. When did you start? Um, doing art i mean i've been doing art pretty much my whole life yeah i've been doing it um professionally since 2003 i've actually been making a living just from art since 2003 since 2003 yeah, yeah. damn i graduated in 02 so it was cool mm -hmm. i mean 
I worked. Oh at, shit! Yeah. So you were you were yeah, you graduated right. like out of out of what? Out of college? I, no, no, high school. Out of high, high school? school? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I I went to college for a little bit. I mm-hmm. took a few art classes, but mostly everything is self taught. Oh okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn, dude. The but the turnaround time from like graduating high school and then jumping right into into that dude um that's fucking amazing yeah i I was blessed um i worked at jiffy lou for like a year or two and while i was there i started airbrushing okay and um i would airbrush out of my garage what were you what did you airbrush i actually started airbrushing for a lot of party crews Oh really? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. sweaters and all yeah. that, like baby girl. And... <laughs> yeah. So I used to airbrush. My friend taught me how to airbrush, and I worked at Plaza Mexico for a few airbrushing right there. Oh, okay. And um, so yeah, I started airbrushing back when social media wasn't really like a big thing. I okay I, on MySpace. Oh I would, yeah. I would promote on there, and I you used just, to promote on MySpace. On MySpace, yeah. Shit. I just I used to promote on there and the I don't know how the party crews found out about me, but I <laughs> I airbrushed for a few party crews that were yeah. pretty popular, and I just remember sharing on on MySpace and then I started getting a bunch of followers and a bunch of messages, and it just blew up. But it got a little dangerous because people would come to my parents' house. That's where I, oh. I would airbrush out of right. my garage. And I started getting a little dangerous because, you know, a bunch of party crews would show up. And um, I'm like, I need to get out of here. I need to open up a shop and be able to do this safely. So I saved up for a few months and um, I found a shop in Downey. It was actually like a few blocks away from this Mm -hmm. off of Imperial and Paramount. I found a shop which was way bigger than what I needed because I just needed like a small location to airbrush and i had i had help from my parents and you know for the deposit and all that stuff i mean i was still young like my credit wasn't even established and nothing like that so they helped me out oh that's cool yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. i was lucky you know my my parents believed in me and all that stuff they always supported all my art since i was a little kid so Yeah. yeah i opened up a shop and I mean, it was scary. You know, I, I wasn't even 21. I opened it when I was 20. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And I started airbrushing and then it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And um, yeah, but that, that's what got me started. From airbrushing for party crews from yeah. MySpace. <laughs> Ameri- the American dream. <laughs> right? No, that's cool. The, yeah. the, I mean, starting where the roots are, especially in, in, in MySpace now. Yeah. Damn. Yep. And then airbrushing, you know, it started dying out. Mm-hmm. It started dying out because back then you could find it in swap meets, you could yeah. find it at at shows. So were you were you were airbrushing primarily like apparel or yeah. okay. I mean, I was doing other stuff. I was even doing murals oh, okay. back then with an airbrush and it would take a very long time. Sounds like it would. Yeah. So Raging Waters found me through the yellow pages. <laughs> Oh, shit. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I went and I gave them an estimate and they hired me. And it was it was a lot of fun. We got to airbrush a bunch. Of, uh, a lot of the stuff is still there. Is it really? Yeah. Let's see if we can pull any of, any of that up. What what uh, what did you do exactly if I could Google? Um, like, what, what we did, did like a mural and then we... we um, Touched up a lot of stuff. Like, a, they had a restaurant, so we painted a lot of the signs. We painted, like, fake cement. Oh, okay. We, there was, like, this huge thing that I also painted. I'm, like, terrified of heights, but oh, no, I terrible. got over it and I did it. <laughs> but um, I think it's right there. Where it says wall mural? Right here? Looks like it. No, no, no. Like actual, like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeez, Google, we have to be very 100% specific. Maybe you put his name next to the... Uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come no? Out. No. That was a long time ago. Yeah, but by the way... Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, oh that one, really? Yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Raging Water Sandimas. Save the Pandas yeah. did that for you. 
you and all your where, kiddos where you the pictures. Already? No, I wasn't Save the Panda. That was way before Save the Pandas. So what were you just? Rick? Just yeah, Rick just Garcia, Rick. Yeah, Rick Garcia yeah. in the house. Um, yeah, that's cool. You did that all with the airbrush. Yeah, so my friend and I did that one. The one that taught me how to airbrush mm. whenever I needed to do. Because I don't really do realistic stuff. So whenever I need to do anything like that specifically, he would always help me out. Were most of uh, Raging Waters uh, murals, were they realistic like that? Not all of them. No. Um, this was actually the last one that we did. We did stuff for them for three years. Mm -hmm. And the first one that I did was completely like in my style. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I've never found a picture of that one, though. That, that was a long time ago. What year was this? Do you remember? So I opened up my shop 2005. Mm -hmm. So probably 2006. Damn, dude. Yeah. So you went... I mean, that's climbing pretty like fast. Yeah. Like graduating, airbrushing Yeah. for, what, two years and then having your own spot yeah and then after that having like a like a major you know theme park in southern california yeah. pick up pick you up to do art inside their their venue yeah damn dude no, that, that was a really good opportunity yeah and we did that one back to back we did it for like three years it was a oh wow was, yeah it was a contractor that would hire us but then he didn't end up getting the job so they didn't reach out to us after that oh yeah. okay yeah. So how did, uh, where did you get Save the Pandas? Okay, where did you get that name from? So once things started dying out with the mm -hmm. whole airbrushing, um, I was finding new ways to keep the shop going. So I used to sell graffiti supplies. And when I was selling graffiti supplies, um, I would do art shows. And I would... I would invite a bunch of graffiti artists, a lot of local artists, and we, we would do shows. That was around 2008. Okay. And um, so we had a show, and a bunch of my friends were just painting stuff. And I, I, I've always liked pandas. So around that time is when Kung Fu Panda was coming out. Okay. So pandas were just blowing up. You yeah. would find them everywhere. So that was my favorite character. So I... I was just painting a bunch of pandas and I drew this little kid. He had a panda hat on and he held a, a sign and it said, save the pandas, <laughs> but it was spelled differently the uh, way I spell it. Yeah. My friend Eddie helped me come up with that name. And that's P A N D U H S. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like okay. Panda. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did that and everybody that came to the show loved the pandas. So since there were graffiti shows, people would bring their black books. That was super common back then to bring your black books and, and get them signed yeah. from different artists. And what's and a black that. book? A black book is, is just a black uh, blank book mm -hmm. with white pages. And then you just pass it around to different graffiti artists. I, I mean, it's even something that we did since high school. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, kind of just like a like a blank notebook yeah, that people yeah. pass around yeah. do their art inside. Yeah. So whenever you okay. go to art shows... You bring these and they'll sign them for you. They'll draw on them. And um, so people would bring them and they would always tell me to draw the pandas. So I would draw my little pandas and I would sign them, save the pandas. And around that time, it's like, I don't know, you know, what else can I do with this? I'm like, yeah. I wanted to start a brand because I was surrounded by a lot of brands and stuff. I also, I would also sell clothing at my shop. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like a little clothing shop it was an airbrush shop and it was the graffiti supplies as well okay. and um back then my friends that were working with me at the shop introduced me to this brand johnny cupcakes and i had never heard about it it was in melrose we went to the grand opening and that's how that's how i heard about it through the grand opening and we went through the grand opening of Johnny Cupcakes. Yeah, of okay. Johnny Cupcakes and um, Melrose. And I didn't even own any shirts or anything, so my friend let me borrow one of his shirts. It fit, <laughs> it fit me all big, but it was, I just I fell in love with it. Yeah. And oh, those are cool. Yeah. So Johnny Cupcakes, it's like they don't sell cupcakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's oh man. Yeah, they they don't sell cupcakes, okay. but their shops look like bakeries. 
Oh, they, yeah. So okay. they had a they had a shop in LA. This was back in 2008. That's when it opened. They had one there. They had one in Boston, and they even had one in London. For oh, them. So they're yeah. they're across the country. Yeah, and across the pond. Yeah. Which what location is this one? Do you know? Does it does it say on the the that, info right that, there? That was Martha's Vineyard. Oh shoot! They still have that one, but it's temporarily closed. Yeah, so right now they only have the Boston location. They actually just moved to a new location in Boston. So everything looks like like all the merch is. Yeah. It like, it looks oh, like the okay. They have fridges in the back with their shirts. <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. So that's when you got into Johnny Cupcakes? Yeah, that's when I got into it. Mm-hmm. So I went to the grand opening. And I this got, is just like a brand. It's just, yeah, it's okay. just a brand. Yeah. Okay. And I got to meet Johnny. I fell in love with the brand. And um, that day I got to meet him for the first time. I showed him my designs. And I'm like, hey, um, what do you think? I want to start my own brand. Mm-hmm. And he loved it. He's like, yeah. do it. You know, he gave me his blessing. And then after that, I was like, all right, Johnny believes in me. I got to do this. Yeah. And so I started making shirts. You know, I, I started just with white shirts, black ink, the cheapest possible. Yeah. And they started selling and in the beginning, when I did it, we would act, it was buy a tea, save a panda. So people would buy shirts and we would donate to save the pandas because back then they were endangered. Oh, yeah. okay. So we would donate 10% of sales. We would donate to WWF, WWE. We would donate to the San Diego Zoo. And there was another um, like organization in China that we would donate to. And um, so, yeah, and not just that, we would also like fundraise for any other things that we can. So we were helping out in any, any ways possible. Damn, dude. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that like putting that like extra like dollar whatever revenue amount towards a cause, did, did that like help your sales? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of people like buying shirts for that reason. For, for yeah. a cause. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, especially, you know, you have vegans or whatever trying to buy your stuff and Yeah. Oh, I'm saving a little panda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might as well, right? Um yeah. damn, damn, that's cool. Yeah. But and so then after that, you know, I would do different shows. Mm-hmm. I was making different merch at the shop. Um, unfortunately we had to close the shop down mm-hmm. because it started getting a little dangerous. Um we're doing a lot of art shows there, and it was a lot of graffiti related stuff. Mm. Um, they unfortunately. And what city I, was this? It was in Downey. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Downey. And unfortunately, I couldn't control anybody doing graffiti. I would always try to help out um, all the local artists there. Mm-hmm. I would I would paint a lot of murals back then. It was easy to get a mural. We would go to different shops, and if we saw there was graffiti or they were all tagged up, yeah, we would show them what we could do, and we would do like beautif- you know, beautification projects. Okay, and we would paint some murals. I would get a couple of friends, and these weren't even paid. We would just do them, just do yeah, doing them for the community, yeah. just to do. Them. Yeah, trying to get our art our art out there, mm-hmm. and um, so yeah, we would always bring any of the local artists with us to help out in the murals just you know and and we would always tell everybody that would buy the the supplies like please don't tag anywhere around here mm. but, you know they didn't listen it started getting bad the city started like trying to shut us down and everything yeah so um they ended up breaking to the shop whoa and they stole a bunch of my merchandise oh and that, man that only happened once Things were happening to my car, like they were, you know, popping my tires, they were scratching it. Like I was getting a bunch of hate out of nowhere. Because you were doing what you do. Yeah. M- murals. Yeah. yeah. And they took it as a threat because. No, I mean, yeah. not, not, it wasn't the city or anything like that. Yeah. It's just, it could have been customers. It could have been, you know, I don't right. know, who knows? Who knows who it was? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm like, I got to get out of here. This isn't safe anymore. It was like, it happened like two, three times that they broke in. And oh, the man. last one was like, that's it, I'm out of here. I had to break my lease. And um, I ended up hearing about Frankincense. Mm-hmm. It's a collectible show in the city of industry. 
And I'm like, oh, maybe I could get a booth there. Mm-hmm. It was only on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So, so they're right there. That's off of the 60, right? Yeah. That's, so, oh, okay. That's, that's their new location. But oh, okay. I know where yeah. that's at. I've never yeah. been in there, by the way. Oh, uh, man. That place be, is right? cool. Yeah. Where Fry's was? Yeah, that's so a new location. The new location is oh. where Fry's is at. Yeah, so now it's bigger. Mm. There, yeah. We gotta check that out. Yeah. Why haven't it, Why haven't you really take, cool. taken me there yet? Every time we pass by, and I tell you it's Frankenstein's. It's like oh. what? because it's really dangerous. You're you're gonna spend a lot of money. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. A lot of nostalgia. A lot of. Oh uh, yeah. We need to decorate the studio. <laughs> that, that, like that's your place money, to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. what? I like spending money. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We like merch. Yeah, but yeah, that's where you know there's a they play a lot of card games now. Oh, that's Pokemon cool. is huge there. Um, but yeah, so I opened up at Frankenstein's. I think it was in 2009, 2010, mm-hmm. and um, I started off airbrushing there because I was still airbrushing. So I was airbrushing and I was selling a a little bit of my Save the Pandas merch. I was just starting off. I was just growing, so I didn't have much. And I started off in the little tables because back then they had tables in the front Mm -hmm. and then they had 10 by 10 booths. But the booths were harder to get. You have to, you know, you have to be there for a long time or there there was like a wait list and all that stuff. Can you open up a picture of uh, inside that place? I want to see what it looks like. So it's just like an empty building with booths and tables. I mean, the booths are there permanently. Oh, okay. There's hundreds of different vendors. And it looks, it, it's Frank and Sons. Oh, I'm on yeah. Frank and Sons. Well, yeah, it's, it's that right there. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, yeah, that, that's their new location. Oh, okay. This one has more parking. It's air conditioned. And right here, I think they're open three to four days out of the week. Maybe go to that YouTube ch- uh Is it like a permanent like video? Residency? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you were you were at this new one. You were at no, I wasn't at this new one. But I've done shows here because my friend Spooksy Boo, she does shows here. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. So how many? I I think that one right there. Yeah, I think that's the first location. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it looks cool. It's really cool. And like Post Malone goes there. A Does lot he really? Of, yeah, a lot of celebrities go Posty? there. Posty, yeah. Wow. So this is where you you ended up, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's where I ended up, and I was in the little tables in the mm-hmm. front. I loved it. It was like yeah. a whole new world to me. And a, a booth opened up, and I took over it immediately. Yeah. And it was cheap back then. I think it was like fifty, a hundred bucks a day. Like that's nothing. And this was what two days a week? You said, yeah, just Wednesdays and Saturdays. How long were you on a table before you got a booth? Not that long. No, I was probably like for a month or two at the most. Oh, okay. Yeah, twice a week for a month, and then you got your own booth. But yeah, a lot of celebrities would go here all the time. I got to meet Stan Lee there. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Any I, other? I, I actually got to paint some stuff for him, and they signed it and everything. That's cool. So that was really cool. Yeah. Ah, a, a lot of celebrities, a lot of celebrities. Who else have you seen there? Um, some of the people from Jackass. Okay. Um, Bud Bundy was there. Really? Yeah. A lot of celebrities. Yeah, I mean, they still have them, but not as much as before. A lot of wrestlers, a lot of, like, baseball players, mm-hmm. basketball players. Yeah. Dang, dude. But, yeah, Stanley was definitely the, the top one. That, that's the t- Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially, like, at a place like that. Yeah. At a collectible place. Yeah. And it, you know what? It wasn't as busy as I thought it was going to be that day. I thought that was going to oh. be the craziest one, and it wasn't that bad. He probably just, like, snuck in. Like, he didn't yeah. tell anybody where he was going to be. Oh, uh, no. No, they, they promoted. Yeah. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah, yeah. They really? Promoted. No, he, he was there doing signings. Yeah. Oh, and it wasn't busy? Yeah, yeah, it was like a meet and greet. There was busier events. What? Yeah. yeah. His wasn't the busiest. I don't know why. What the hell yeah. was wrong with <laughs> that? Story. But that was that was a long time ago. I think I was like around 2011, 2012. But still, it's yeah. Stan Lee. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. what the hell at a at a collectible show? Yeah. Dab, so you're only at in 2011, and you've already accomplished that much in that amount of time. Right? Yeah. Wow. I'm 
Like, where's yeah. our timeline? Where are we? I know. We're, we're at, we're at 2011 yeah. right now. Crazy, Let's move into, what did you do for New Year's Eve 2011 going into 12? <laughs> and then we'll move on from there. That's awesome, So from, from, okay, so we're following the timeline. So Frank and Sons, you meet, uh, Stanley event. Yeah. Wait, hold on. You said there were busier events? What was busier than Stan Lee? I mean, there was a lot of wrestlers that would go. I, mm. I can't really think of any okay. specifically right now. Right. But there was wrestlers that would go that would bring in more crowd. Or there was mm. or there was like um, Blows baseball my mind. players that would come and that was it was busier. Yeah. Blows my mind. But the thing is, for Stan Lee, I think it was only Stan Lee. For all these other ones, it was multiple celebrities. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever. Right, let's <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, at Frank and Sons, and then um, what was your next step? So yeah, I was there at Frank and Sons, and while I was at Frank and Sons, I just kept doing. I kept painting more murals. I was just painting as much as possible. I was making more merch, and while I was there, I was doing fun releases. So I would release certain things, and I would. You know, people would come out and it's just I'm so grateful for Frankincense because I feel like that's, you know, I feel like that's what got me to the next level. Yeah, I got to meet so many people there. That's where I got to meet my wife. That's where I got oh, to okay. meet some of my best friends. So I'm just really grateful for it. Um, I ended up leaving in 2012, right before my my daughter was born, like the end of 2012. Yeah. My Oh, no, 2013. Yeah, yeah, My daughter was born in November 2013, so I left a few months before that. Okay. And yeah. uh, after that, where did uh, where did you head? So after that, um, so with the whole Save the Pandas things, I feel like while I was there, I mean, it was still, it was, it was good, you know? Yeah. Well, but, hold on. Uh, uh, during that time, uh, while you had your booth, did you have uh, like an online store or was it just strictly? I, yeah, I did have an online store, but it was mostly people would come and shop. Oh, okay. Frank and Sons. Yeah, okay. I, I had regulars. I had people that still support me until this very wow. day. Okay. And a lot of the times when we have an anniversary and I, I share it online, yeah. I'm like, oh, share some of your best memories of us. And a lot of people are always like, oh, when I used to go visit you at Frank and Sons. So I, I'm still. Oh, very, that's yeah. cool. There's still a lot of people that support us till this day. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, before that, while I was at, at Frank and Sons, um, I think that was 2010, 2011, I had the opportunity to help take over a gallery in Whittier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where was that? It was uh, of Bright Street, like right in front of the bank. Okay. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was. Um. It was in Uptown Whittier. Yeah. But it wasn't like in the main street. It was like one street over. Okay. But right now, there, uh, by uh, Greenleaf uh, or Lambert, somewhere in Uptown Whittier. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, right where the Starbucks is at. Oh, okay. Like I know. Behind where... that. Oh, behind okay. That. Now it's like a barber shop, I think. But um. But yeah, I had that opportunity. Um, my friend told me that he wanted to help out her friend. That wasn't really doing good with the business, and um, they knew that I knew a lot of artists, so they wanted to see how I could help. So we took over and we helped out. We did a lot of shows together, and while we were helping her out, she decided that she wanted to retire. So we ended up taking over the shop. Oh, yeah, okay. And it it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun because we used to do a lot of shows there. We got to meet a lot of artists that were just starting, and now they're like huge artists. So when you say shows, you mean like, uh, like art shows? Like art shows? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we used to do a lot of art shows. We used to cater a lot to like street artists, like graffiti artists, and so that was the motif of like the yeah. of of your guys' studio. Yeah, it was graffiti art. Yeah. So I mean, we used to get some you know some bigger names there, but mm -hmm. we used to like give an opportunity to artists that were just starting. Oh, that's cool. To a lot of local artists. Yeah. How important is that? Like in in that culture, how important is is that to to the culture? 
like inviting newer it, it's, artists. It's really important because a lot of artists don't get to get that kind of exposure. A lot of artists don't believe in themselves. So when they get these kind of opportunities, they get to see um, how people love their art. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we always loved giving opportunities to people um, that, you know, that weren't established yet. And now, now they're, now they're established. It must. Now, now they're doing big things. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, it must yeah. be like, uh, gra like so fulfilling and, yeah. you know, yeah. gratifying knowing like, hey, like you, you had this artist and, and you look, what, how many years has that been? Yeah. And they're still doing their art yeah. and, and they're getting out there. Yeah, and well known. Way. Yep. Yeah, Damn. but back then we were still painting a lot of murals. Yeah. Um, we were doing more stuff. Now I was moving because before when I was doing murals, it was always like in Downey, Linwood, mm. Southgate, Paramount. Now we were doing murals in Hollywood. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So we were painting stuff out there. We were painting a lot of stuff in Melrose. So Melrose has been having a big community of like just murals and street artists a lot of big names are there and that's where i always would always go and get inspired i would always go with my friends and we would go see the murals and um we got to get opportunities we got to meet artists that were already painting and out there and they invited us to do some walls and we would just do it all the time so like a lot of the murals started we, we just started doing a lot of stuff out there mm -hmm. um we used to weed paste as well we used to do a lot of illegal stuff, like a. But you used to do what? Graffiti. Weed pasting. Weed pasting. So weed pasting is. Um, I love weed, and this is the first time I've ever heard <laughs> no, that. No, it's weed. <laughs> weed paste. Oh, weed. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, never yeah. mind. Like you know, Shepard Fairey, how he um, puts up the posters and all that yeah. stuff. You, well, we have to Google this because I'm half um, dumb when it comes to this type <laughs> of stuff. So. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, let me Google. Okay. All right. Go for it, Ray. Explain to us. <laughs> Explain to me, please. So, yeah, weed paste is, you know, you could print, weed out, paste. You could either okay. print out the posters or you could hand draw okay. them. And it's wheat right. paste, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Mind Buzz <laughs> Nation <laughs> Media. Not weed. You're like, I love weed. <laughs> I love weed too. Okay. Oh, so it's a textured type. Okay. Mm hmm. You said like like okay, yeah, right? Yeah, put or um put Shepard. weed paste posters. Oh, I don't know why it's a texture. <laughs> I put poster. Yeah. All right, cool. So you did a couple of these, Rick? Yeah. I did a lot. Let me do this. Look. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, those are cool. I like. Yeah. Those. So if you put weed paste poster, probably put Mel Melrose Avenue. You'll probably find some of my old stuff. How like how large were these things? As big as you wanted to go. Really? Yeah. How do we even begin to to make one of these things? We would go to Kinko's and we would print out a lot of them. Um, we would print like eleven by seventeen, and okay. then we just put a bunch of them together, mm, make okay. bigger ones, or we would hand draw some bigger ones as well. Okay, so how do you, and is it like a specific type of paper that uh, the art is printed on? I mean, the thinner the better. Uh -huh. Yeah, if it's too thick, then it's harder to put it up. Okay. But basically, you either make your own paste or you buy the paste, but mm -hmm. you have to put it on first, then you put the poster, and then you put the paste over it. That way it'll stick on. And then it dries and it's, and, hard, it's hard to take it off. And according to California law, this is... Yeah, it's illegal. Illegal. Yeah. So it's just like spray painting on the... Yeah. So you should say, I may or may not have... I may, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. it's, it's past the statute of limitations, so I think Rick is fine. <laughs> I even got hired by a company, and I would weed paste posters for like a lot oh. of bands and a lot of artists and stuff you gotta give me the yeah. mixture of that because that i've always i've always wondered how that like how how people do that it's, now now i know it's, it's called weed weed, weed paste weed, yeah weed it's, pasting. It's, it's um water flour and sugar really that's yeah. it 
Yeah, but at the end, I just started buying my own pace because that consistency Mm -hmm. wouldn't always work. There was times that we did the pace. We would go out there, go all the way to Hollywood and try to put them up, and they wouldn't stick Mm -hmm. because the pace the pace would have just wouldn't wasn't good did you mostly do it at night yeah at night i mean i don't think he i don't think he'll do it during the day like right in front of everybody (laughs) i don't know maybe you want to live life life i mean i i would do some during the day yeah 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 those are cool i like those that's how you do it yeah so i mean they still they still do these nowadays you go to i like them yeah I would also do stencils. So you see how, if you could scroll back up, you see that purple one right there? Yeah. Like that's stenciled. So that's what we would do. We would stencil on paper and then we would weed paste them or we would just stencil straight to the wall, to mm-hmm. the ground. Oh, those are cool. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. I learn every I learn everything doing this podcast. <laughs> I do. This is I've always wondered about that. Let me um, see a mind buzz one on Mount Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, I've I've always I've always thought about that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it would be a good way to advertise for free. Right? Yeah. Or a big how about this? A big QR code. Hey, yeah. there you with go. the link. That's All a right. good one. All right. Yeah. I'll think you about that. <laughs> I need you to get on my shoulders. I need I need you to get the little corner up there. Uh just would you put the like the mixture in like a like a spray bottle or or how would you even like no, get that on there? We just, would just have it in a bucket. Uh-huh. I have to make sure that I had a lid because mm-hmm. there was a lot of times that it would fall in the car. Yeah, you have to yeah. like oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would just use like a big it's like this Big old brush, yeah. like something that you would see like in the Mickey Mouse cartoons. That's funny. Yeah. Dude. Um, I had a, I was thinking about this, the the stigma of like graffiti art. Like, have you like in your experience over the years has that changed? I mean, yeah. There, like, it, it have you has it progressed? Like, it, has it moved forward as I, an art form? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of artists that started off as just strictly graffiti artists, artists that would do nothing but illegal stuff. Now they're doing huge galleries, selling paintings for yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first time I, well, not the first time, but one of, I, I feel like the mainstream one was, do you remember seeing uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop? Oh, yeah, yeah. The documentary. Yeah. And yeah. then right after they did... Um, like a whole exhibit in downtown LA and it was all street yeah. art and now really? do it all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. I actually come out on on that uh documentary. Do you really? Yeah. I watched the documentary yeah. like four times. YouTube it. Really like it. YouTube it. We gotta see this. I, I mean you can see the side <laughs> of me, but my friend he comes out clearly, but you yeah. can see me next to him. Rick's like you could see the top of my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Mom, I made it. <laughs> No, but yeah, so we went to a Mr. Yeah. Mr. Brainwash show, which okay. is yeah. what the documentary is about. Wow. Yeah. We got to go to that show, and man, that was one of the best shows I've ever been to. That's so cool. Yeah. So it, so the, like, because, like, when I think of, like, graffiti art, you think of, like, gangs and, and yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that that's like the overall stigma mm-hmm. of it right like what like in in your like in your perspective like how like the progression how do you think what what changed all that what what made it more positive more than just a negative whoa <laughs> sorry, sorry. not gunshots <laughs> dang <laughs> I almost dropped. I almost dropped. Covered. Oh, what is yeah, it? Yeah, drop yeah. down and roll. I wanted to wake you guys right up. when you were talking about gangs. Too. <laughs> wanted to wake you guys up. I'm awake. <laughs> <You're still here. laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, I feel like it still gets that stigma, mm. but there's just has been so much that has changed. Mm. You know, like it's just it's more out there. Like you see it more in. Um, like even at the Cheech, they have graffiti now, you know. Yeah. So it's it's in it's in galleries, it's in museums. So is this the? Um... I think this is the trailer. Um, I'll put the volume down. I'm sorry. Dang, that shit's all the way up. <laughs> Little 
Ears, so. Woke me up. Woke everybody else up too. <laughs> Is it right? <laughs> yeah. Banksy. Oh, okay. Ah! I really like this. Keep your eye out for the cops. That's weed pasting. Dang. Yeah, that was, see, that has that a, has that ever happened to you? Yeah. <laughs> not with a, not with a bucket that big. But, uh, 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 <laughs> I've definitely ruined a few cars before. <laughs> okay. But I feel like this film mm-hmm. helped, you know, help show that, and then they got to see what. I mean, look at Banksy now, you know, like his stuff goes yeah. for millions. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the ones that sold for like a million, I think it was in Melrose. And we used to every time we used to go to Melrose, we used to see it up there. It was a rat and it was just a stencil and they cut it out of the wall and sold yeah. it. Wow. Yeah. What's one of your um, who inspires you? I mean, I have a lot of different inspirations. Definitely Dabs and Myla are one of the biggest ones. I got I I've had the pleasure of meeting them a few times. I actually got to paint alongside them before. Oh too. wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I was invited to a show by one of my friends, um, Bumblebee. He's from he's from Downey. And um he invited me to this show. And Dabs and Myla had just came over. Oh, wow. That's cool. They had just came over to the United States. Mm-hmm. And uh, where are they from? I, I forget. They're somewhere, from somewhere in Europe. They're from overseas. Yeah. Yeah. But they, oh, man, I, I love their stuff so much. Bumblebee. They, they actually have a show going on right now. Yeah. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah. But yeah, they would do shows. And then they, I went to that one there. I got to experience that one. That was really cool. Um, Bumblebee is the one that has the mural right there in Downey, right? Of the little girl. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like a Bumblebee suit, kind of. Um, where is that one at? Um, it's kind of by like the theater, the the one where you get to eat. Like, oh, okay. Like, in that, mm-hmm. that area. He used to have a lot of different murals in Downey. He, he, I actually used to sell him. Um, some spray paint. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I used to get him, like, special spray paint that he would use. Why? He was, like, banned from buying spray paint? No, or? no, no. It's just oh. I was, like, one of the only ones that, <laughs> that he used to, like, painting with this oh, brand okay. called Belton. Oh. Is that his? That's his stuff? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He, he does some huge stuff. And back when I met him in Downey, he used to do these really cool installations because... The reason why he his name is Bumblebee loves mm-hmm. you. He would spread awareness of the bees. Really? Yeah. So he used to do stuff out of paper mache. He used to do like beehives, and then he used to do little bees out of clay. And he used to do installations all over Downey. <sighs> That's cool. Wow. Again, like another tie into like a a real world. Yeah. Cons. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, um, like, how hard is it to be an artist? Like, especially you that you're pretty much self-employed, right? Like, yeah. are you hustling, like, 24-7? Like, are you always thinking oh, yeah. of what to do? Absolutely. And I just heard what Jesse said, that it's, like, one of the what, the second hardest careers. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Close to to be an actor, he said, yeah. right? I wonder if that, a that podcaster is, is up in the 10. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. It has to be, right? Jeez. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're 100 percent hustling 24 oh, seven yeah. all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I have my sleepless nights. I mean, now now it's easier. Mm-hmm. Now I you know I 
I mean, I do events every weekend almost. Yeah. But every event, I'm still, I can't sleep the night before. I'm super nervous for it. And it's just. What do you get nervous about? I don't know. It's just. That, that pre-show that jitters? Gonna, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I'm going to forget something. Mm. That I'm not going to wake up on time. Like, I just overthink. And then, oh, okay. I'm, and then I'm, I'm there at the show. It's like, this is what I was worried about. Yeah, I was about. worried about yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Like this past weekend, I did the Riverside Day of the Dead. It was from 1 to 10, but we have to be there since 9 a.m. It's a long show. So we're there from 9 a.m. And then it always takes an hour or two to finish packing up. So we're there from 9 to 12. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then even local shows, you've done the Upland Lemon Festival. Yeah, I've done that one. I I do a lot of uh, conventions. So I also do a lot of Halloween art. Mm -hmm. um, so we are doing Halloween shows year round. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, and the community that I'm in, mm -hmm. we're having Halloween shows in January, February, March. It doesn't matter. We and and it's it's just a whole different world. Damn. Yeah. Um, can you agree what Jesse JFR said about uh, uh, you're pretty much like a band of gypsies with their own brand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think yeah. about that all the time. Yeah. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, where have you, like, uh, what's the farthest you've gone to do a, to do a show? I haven't really gone anywhere far. I mm -hmm. mean, I've just gone to Vegas. Mm -hmm. I've been to Arizona. Yeah, it, it's a little bit harder since I have a family. Right. So, I, I mean, I've been invited to New York, um, to a lot of different mm -hmm. states, but I'm very limited of where I can go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, between being an artist, you're still dad, yeah, right? Yeah. You're still Fam dad. Fam family you're still husband. Yeah. Husband or boyfriend? Husband. husband. husband yeah. Okay. Just, just celebrated our two year anniversary on Halloween. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You guys got married on Halloween? Yeah, we got married on Halloween. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We, we love Halloween. You should have seen his proposal. I thought that was really cool. Was it? What'd I you do? proposed to uh, Sinespia uh, while we were watching Wedding Stinger. No, oh, that's so awesome. So when he gets on his knees and proposes, that's when I did it. Oh, my God. I'm blushing. <laughs> I have butterflies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. I mean, the whole theater clapped. Like, oh, yeah, my God. That was so cool. Everybody was yeah. congratulating us afterwards. So it was, it was really magical. That's really cool. Special. Where'd you get the idea from? Have you ever just so I've been wanting to propose to her yeah. for a very long time and she didn't want to get married. Mm -hmm. She just didn't believe in marriage. Right. And then a few years ago she's like, ah, maybe we should get married. And so I was always thinking of the perfect proposal. She was like, He's getting rich now. I think I need to <laughs> I, I, I need to lock him in right now. Here's my chance. It's actually when she came into my life that our business started growing tremendously. Okay. Because back when I was doing Save the Pandas before her, it's just like I still live with my parents. Mm. I I had um, moved out and I had gotten my own place, but it was just like a little garage. Um I didn't have many bills. I mean, back when I had the shop, yeah, I used to hustle because yeah. I was paying, you know, for the rent and all that stuff. But at Frankenstein's, it was easy. You know, you would just pay per day. So it was good, but it's just like, you know, like I I was like, I um, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Like, I didn't have a family or anything. It was just me. I was just having fun, yeah. you know. And when I met her. She immediately got involved. She she loved the brand. She loved it. Um, we would go see my murals. She would come to the shows. She would help me out. And she was super into it. So once she got involved, I just saw like a whole different potential. Really? The brand. Yeah. She, the way she would talk to our supporters, like it was just way different. It was, mm. it was a whole new thing. So she started getting involved. People loved it seeing us how happy we were how into it we were how just how everything was changing i think that that dynamic like that dynamic works out perfectly because your supporters see that like you're enjoying it but yeah. it's both of you yeah enjoying yeah. it doing what you both love yeah definitely. and they see that yeah and they want to support even more because of it yeah yep damn yeah so she she started helping out 
I started creating a lot of stuff. I started doing designs because she's my muse, you mm-hmm. know. So I started doing stuff um, inspired by her. She would give me ideas, and we're just creating. And now it was a whole new ball game. Yeah. So we went from she ended up moving in. We went from that little garage to I'm like, all right, we need a bigger place. You know, we got more merch now. So we ended up moving to La Habra. And we were there for a few years, and our business just kept growing and growing. But, um, yeah, it was, yeah, around 2013, I feel, once she came into my life, I mm-hmm. just felt like that's when everything just started going to the next level. And when when you say going to the next level, like, what, what does that entail? Now it's like, okay, now it's not just for myself. Now mm-hmm. I have a family to support, and, um, you know, we're expecting... And one thing I always tell every artist that doesn't have a kid, once I find out they're going to have a kid, I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, your hustle just went up three to four times. <laughs> now now, okay. you're, now, you're really going to work. Yeah. So, you know, we we went from paying 500 bucks to that little garage. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, cool. Now we're going to move to La Habra. We're paying three times the amount. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm like, we have a daughter on the way. So I just started working way harder. That's when I started... um. And I didn't have frankincense now to rely on. Now I was doing online releases. And that's, remember how I told you before, I'm like, oh, my online sales were okay. Yeah. Now we were relying on our on, on our online sales. Yeah. And that was going really good. We were shipping so much that we had our friends that they would come over and help us out. And they, we would always have shipping parties like every week. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Shipping yeah. parties? Yeah. Okay. So... Are you are you writing this stuff now? Are you taking notes, Amber? <laughs> we gotta have shipping party. Shipping party sounds so cool with weed weed pasting. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, and then we started doing a little events here and there, and um, um, yeah, it was just it's just incredible how everything changed. Damn. Yeah. Did your perspective on art change at all during like from from now? Like, ha- has your perspective of art changed? Like, um, like is it does it mean more because now it's your it's your um your soul? Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. I mean, even now, there's opportunities that happen. Like, mm-hmm. I I've, I always say it: the best is yet to come, mm-hmm. and it's just like. There's so much more that I haven't accomplished. There's so many goals that I have. Um, right before the pandemic, we're actually looking into opening up a shop in Riverside. Oh, and yes. And we're looking at location awesome. okay. and everything. But one thing that's always held us back is I had a shop before. Mm-hmm. I know how much work it takes, how mm-hmm. much you got to be there. And back then, you know, I was single. My friends, we used to help me out. And, you know, it was just it was fun. But now it's like we're going to have to be there all the time and finding the right person to work for you that you could trust. Like, I know a lot of people that have shops and there's always horror stories, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just like I would have to be there most of the time doing it. So now it's like I see it as a blessing in disguise. I'm like, I'm glad we didn't open up a shop. I'm really happy with what we do now. You know, we we work whenever we want to. And it's not just Save the Pandas that I do now. I have a bunch of other things oh you do yeah okay so i also work for johnny cupcakes you know they're the ones that inspired me and now i get to work for them and it's it's such an honor that i get to work with them i've done a lot of fun projects with them i've collaborated with them i've done my own design actually the shirt that i'm wearing now this is one of the collaborations that i did with them and um just a lot of great opportunities that came from that um I also, so yeah, I've been working with them for, since 2017. And what I do with them, we do our own pop-ups. So basically what I do is Save the Pandas, Mm -hmm. but I'm doing this for Johnny Cupcakes. And we pop up, we do different different stuff with them. Um, I work with them at Designer Con. I got into travel with Johnny to different places because he's, um, he does like a lot of talks. Oh, okay. And um, so, like, I, what kind of talks? Do you mean? Like, like, um, what is it called? 
um he's a speaker like he's a guest speaker for like a lot of stuff oh okay like motivational stuff or like yeah like stuff. motivational stuff mm-hmm. and all that stuff so like a bunch of big companies hire him and he'll go and he'll he'll just motivate a lot of people. really yeah okay yeah and it's it's super that's cool in, yeah it's very inspiring because even before that i got to work with him mm-hmm. i used to attend these talks and um, now I'm behind the scenes and I'm selling his merch and getting to hear him. Oh, that's awesome. Talks. Yeah. That's cool. And that's cool. Um, so, yeah, on top of that, we also do Sticker Wizards, which is my sticker company. Uh, it's me and my partner, Matt. And uh, that is something that started off just for fun. And what is what is, what's uh what's that what sticker where is it? It's uh it's I think a, Amber showed me that it's one a sticker, time. But, mm-hmm. It's a sticker printing company. So, oh, okay. So um, he gave me the opportunity to be able to to offer it to my friends at a really good price. Mm. So back then we would just I would just target my vendor friends. We would do events and I would offer it to a lot of people for a really really good price, and um. It just started growing and growing and growing. So we're like, let's open up a website. And that took us a while to do. But like two, about two to three years into it, we opened up our site during the pandemic. And it just took us to a whole different level. So now we're offering that to other people. And we don't just do stickers. We do a lot of other different things. Okay. Dang. Didn't you um, do our, our concha ice cream sandwich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. The, you did the image and printed. Yeah, I did that. Oh, really? Yeah, I, well, I printed some stickers with them. Um, yeah, um, thanks to Amber, we've gotten a lot of opportunities. I, I um, didn't do anything. Nah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the mural alone, the Donna's mural, Yeah, that has helped me get so many other murals. Like, whenever I tell people, like, oh, I, I show them that one, they're like, oh. Like, because, you know, not everybody knows what Donna's is. But when you show them that mural, it's like they've seen it everywhere. It, mm-hmm. it came out. It, didn't even didn't it come out in the like in the news yeah, and it's like been on, the news on Me Channel Too, and really? all these things. Yeah, Channel Twenty Two. Yeah, so it's like it's it's everywhere. Yeah. So um, actually, because I mean, I I also do like um like I wholesale to different shops, and Amber was the first one that reached out to me before they had opened up Orchateria. They reached out to me mm-hmm. and because I had one shop that I used to sell my stuff to like a long time ago. And then she reached out. And because of that, now I wholesale to a bunch of other shops. Now we're like in 10 different stores. Dang, dude. I didn't know this. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And but she's the one that just got that idea in my head. I was like, OK, so it's possible to do this, you know, and other other stores started reaching out. Right. We started reaching out to other stores as well. And now it's just like, yeah. Dang. Yep. Give a round of applause for Amber. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would just work the camera. I, I know, know, right? I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and um, we got to throw like our mm-hmm. first little uh, show. Because, I mean, we used to do shows, a lot of shows before in my airbrush shop yeah. and the uh, gallery. But I hadn't hosted my own show in a very long time. So we got to host a show at Orchateria. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and their, uh, their event space? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're actually going to be one of the first ones that did it, and then mm-hmm. the pandemic happened. Oh. So we Remember held that? it off for, yeah. like, two years. Really? Yeah. He was going to, like, open, like, uh-huh. okay, this is our event space, yeah. and we had everything ready, and then the freaking pandemic. Yeah. You also did a pop-up um, with Johnny Cupcakes at Donuts, remember? Yeah, yeah, That went yeah. really, yeah. really yeah. well. Yep. You did the donut drop, right? The donut yeah, that went drop. really good. Yep. Anything in the future that you're going to... Do another pop up over there at I mean, HRM. I'm, I'm always open to mm. that. Definitely. There we go. Let's do it. Yeah, we need we need to restock some merch too. Yeah, we gotta get your merch <laughs> yeah. back in there. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in charge of merch anymore, so that's what happened. Oh, that's why. Um, before we we came into the studio, we were talking a little bit about the the Cheech. Yeah. And Riverstar, are you able to talk about that? Yeah. So. Um, we, I actually know some friends that are in there. Um, I'm part of the studio called the East Side Art House. It's a studio in Riverside, um, uh, started by my friend Juan. And I joined that, uh, about a year ago. 
And there's a lot of talented artists there from Riverside, from Moreno Valley. It's, it's mostly all local artists. And um, one of our studio mates from there, her name is Rosie Cortez. She's She got invited to be in the Cheech. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, and we're having an art show this weekend, actually, on Saturday. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Why everything it, it, is happening it, when when we have when stuff we have to, do. to do? Yeah, I know. It's, a, it's a closing show this Saturday, and it's really cool too because um. Well, it's six to nine, so I, yeah. I'm sorry. We, it's six to nine, so maybe we can. Where's this at? In Riverside. Okay. At our studio. Yeah. So yeah, we also they also filmed like a little documentary mm-hmm. while we were working on this, and they're gonna show it at the closing. Oh, that's and awesome. It's, and it's about an hour, an hour and a half, I think. That's awesome. Damn. What do you think? I mean, I don't mean to dampen the mood or anything, right? But we we want to know, like, I mean, everything seems amazing, right? But do you ever have days where you're just like, like, not tired of it, but I don't know how to say it. Like, yeah. Are you ever discouraged? Do you ever feel like maybe you have a bad show or anything like that? Like, oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. But it's it's the failures that you know that you learn from. I feel like every show that I've done, it's it, you know, it's it's always a hit or miss. Um, now I get to kind of see what show is gonna be worth it for us. Before I used to say yes to every diff- every show, I would get invited and I would say yes to every show. Was that because you were um yours? barely starting that you would accept the opportunities because no. you weren't out there yet, or you just we're the yes man every time. No, I just like to challenge myself and see how much I can do. Okay. But then I overworked myself and it got to the point where I didn't want to do any of this anymore. Mm-hmm. I took a break from Save the Pandas. When I started Johnny Cupcakes, I took a break because it's just like we're celebrating 14 years of Save the Pandas this year. Oh, wow. And, wow. and, and awesome. I, and I love it. It's the biggest <laughs> blessing. I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. But when you do something for so long, you mm-hmm. know, you you fall out of it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You lose inspiration. Like there's so many different, you know, trials. But um so yeah, I didn't want to do it anymore. It's cuz we were doing way too many shows. Mm-hmm. Way too many shows. We, you know, we went during the pandemic and we were just at home. We we're just doing online sales. Everything was going great. We didn't have to worry about doing events. Yeah. And um, so then, you know, the pandemic started getting better and we started doing shows. And I was saying yes to like every show possible just because things were starting to change now. Yeah. And it was just so much work. And um, I, you know, I'm like, I'm going to take a break. I took like almost six months off because I didn't have any inspiration. I just I didn't want to work. You know, so it's just like I took a break and then I came back stronger. I'm, yeah. How but, important? How important was that break to you? Oh, it's, it's super important. Yeah. You know, my mental health, my physical health, like all that stuff. It's the most important thing because back then I was doing way too many shows that it's like we would only have like a few days off during the week. We were booked every single weekend. It was just too much. It was really overwhelming. So I was I was just burned out. So once I came back from that, and I was like, okay, now I know what shows I'm going to say yes to. I'm not going to do an event every weekend. Sometimes we're double booked. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, we... You we, would have, meaning double booked, you would have one pop-up, uh, like you and, and somebody else yeah. would work at separate yeah. locations on the same weekend? Yeah. Oh, come. Yeah. So I, I have my wife that helps me. I have mm-hmm. my niece Haley that helps me. I have other friends that help me. And then I, I like I have my friend Renee that helps me do like the packaging and all these other things. So there's a lot of people that help make this successful. Mm-hmm. And um, but you know they can't work all the time. Yeah. So a lot of the times it's just me and my wife working the events, and then we have to bring our daughter with us. So so that's where it gets hard. Yeah, in so a couple of years you can just put her on the counter, right? She can start. <laughs> <Sally>. <laughs> But I mean, she likes it, you know. Like yeah. She, oh, that's she, cool. She's an artist too. She, oh, okay. She has her own stickers that she sells, and oh, people, there we go. Starting her young, yeah. man. That's yeah. cool. 
Yeah, so she loves it. It's not anything that I ever pushed for her to do. It's just something that she loves. You know, yeah. she, she's a little artist and she's really good at it. Yeah. Damn, damn. Yeah, so it's just, you know, they, they come, she gets to learn. And, and it's just beautiful because whenever she's there and people come out and support, I'm like, yeah. oh, she did it. And she'll come out and she'll thank them and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. That must yeah. be fulfilling. I mean, oh, at yeah. 10 years old, right? You said 10 years old. She, to, she's 10? No, she's 9. I'm sorry, right. 9 nine years yeah, old. Yeah, but she did her. I have a 10-year-old. I think that's oh, okay. why I jumped to. Oh, yeah. No, I have an 11-year-old. <laughs> why do I keep on saying he's 10? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay yeah, nine year olds old doing it okay yeah, yeah. dang dude you must I be remember, proud i remember when she was really little yeah we used to bring her into the office and oh yeah yeah we used to give yep. her paper to draw so she could yeah. stay there and that's awesome yeah amber's so, always been really good with her yeah. yeah there you go i'm just cool with everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so that inspiration, that break, right? I mean, that when you mean you came back stronger, you had newer ideas, newer designs. Uh, uh, where yeah, just new ideas, new designs, uh -huh. you know, new opportunities. Um, like now that I'm part of the studio, there has been so many different opportunities yeah. with that. Um, they are in charge of so many of the murals that are in Riverside. Oh, so, you okay. know, I was telling you how... In Melrose, there's this whole community of, yeah. of murals and stuff. When I first came to Riverside, there was nothing. There was like probably five murals, and it's murals that have been there for 10, 20 years. And little by little, I started seeing more murals pop up, more graffiti stuff and everything, and like big, big murals from big artists. And um, now that the East Side Art House is there, um, they they have it in a location. It's off of Park Avenue. It's like in um, uh, it's like in the East Side. Mm -hmm. It's not like you know really a safe area and stuff like that. But they have been beautifying it so much, and it has gotten so much great feedback, so much great attention. They've been cleaning up so many things. So like now they start off like one or two murals. Now there's like ten, fifteen murals in the in the East Side of Riverside. And they're just involved in a lot of other stuff as well. So I haven't personally done my own mural. Like, I don't have my own mm -hmm. wall yet. But I've assisted in many of them. Oh, wow. And that's a cool thing, you know. For, with the studio, we all help each other out. And um, so, yeah, that, that's that's been great. And there's just a lot of other opportunities. I mean, there's a lot of mural proposals that were supposed to happen that didn't that fell through for one reason or another, but there's the opportunities are always there. Yeah, yeah. So it the so the Cheech um, thing that you're working on is that. Do you have any other projects that you're working on at the moment? So for the Cheech, I'm going to be doing an airbrushing gig there. Okay. They hired me to do like some employee appreciation stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to be there in December and I'm going to get to airbrush for them, which is cool because now that I got my foot in the door, then mm -hmm. many other opportunities have, yeah. are going to come from that. Because a couple of my um, a couple of my studio mates have worked a lot with the Cheech uh rosie mm -hmm. her work is in there mm -hmm. she has also taught classes there we have a bunch of other friends that have light painted in front of the cheech so they do more than so she like actually does like um like she teaches in there and yeah really? the, the cheech is offering a lot of different things and okay uh, so we have a an art i didn't walk. know that yeah so we have an art walk on thursdays mm -hmm. the first thursday of every month and now that the Cheech is there, they're they're getting involved in everything. Really? Yeah. So they actually you can go to the Cheech for free on, on Art Walk. Oh. Yeah. And that's that's when Thursdays the first the first Thursday of every month. First Thursdays I, I think of like every from month. Six to nine, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they have classes. They do different things. They have light painting. Um. So yeah, it's just. The Cheech being in Riverside is just helping it grow even more. Riverside has been growing a lot. Yeah. Like for, since I first moved there, I moved there in 2015. It has grown a lot. 
there's a lot of new shops, a lot of cool restaurants. There's a lot of restaurants that are coming from LA because there's just really yeah yeah Riverside is growing a lot, and I honestly like it more than LA. How's I, the how, how's like the rent space? You know, um, rent. I mean, it's more affordable than LA, definitely. Uh-huh. But now, I mean, everything's you know everything's going up. Amber like Amber likes uh, her Long Beach and <laughs> and downtown LA. So are, are you I'm asking are you I'm asking <laughs> questions here. <laughs> I mean, all my all my family is still in LA. You know, we yeah. go out there once a week to visit. But it's just it's just a different vibe. It's more chill out in Riverside. It's not as crazy as it is in LA. Yeah. Um. I've been over there a handful of times. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Visiting um the venue MTL a handful of times. I love that venue. Yeah. Really cozy and nice. Um. And then the last time her and I went out there, we went out to the Cheech, and I thought it was just the fucking coolest thing ever Dude, and every every yeah. opportunity i have i just i tell people you guys go <laughs> oh, go yeah. yeah it's awesome it, it's beautiful i yeah. when i first i went out when it first opened and i left so inspired yeah it's it's cool i mean we used to go to the library before it was the cheech oh okay uh, yeah so it used to be a library and now they turn it into that so just seeing how much it transformed mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, downtown Riverside is pretty cool too. The nightlife out there yeah. is yeah is awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of good restaurants. There's a lot of I mean, you know, we love going to the Mission. Um, I'm gonna be vending at the Festival of Lights in December, and that's really fun. We're actually gonna be in front of the Cheech. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So the Festival of Lights is like one of the biggest um, Christmas events in California. Mm-hmm. I've and maybe we could pull up Riverside. pictures. Maybe we could pull up pictures because I've I've heard of it, but I've never. Oh, okay. I've never gone. Yeah. What uh, what date is it? Yeah, I mean it starts. I believe it starts like right after Thanksgiving. It used to go until January, but now they're ending it like yeah after Christmas. A lot of like Christmassy type of events always do that they always run from like right after thanksgiving all yeah. the way up until like the third or fourth of january yeah christmas always yeah whoa yeah so they they light up the mission there's a bunch of lights and there's a lot of they do like a firework show when it opens um there's a lot of like pop-ups so there's going to be like a lot of different artists that are going to be vending there. But they also have like hot cocoa and tamales, yeah. like all that good stuff. Hopefully Northgate doesn't have a uh, tamale <laughs> pop up because those <laughs> things are terrible. We had, we, I've, I've never had them. The day don't, yesterday. don't have them, please. The day before yesterday at night, we, were, we had a long day and we we're like, what do we eat? And he's like, I want tamales. And I'm like, tamales from where? <laughs> so we were by a Northgate and we got them and he says it's the nastiest thing. Oh, man. They're the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> Let's just say that, to say the <laughs> least. This thing's fucking awesome, dude. And you're going to be out there, um, you said, after Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there in December. I don't know what dates I'm going to get approved for yet, because you mm-hmm. you choose a bunch of different dates, and it's up to them to approve you. How many yeah. vendors do they have? So, before... What's they... the footprint? I'm sorry. Like, how, how large is it? Is it just like... So, a... it's not just the mission, because, I mean, yeah. the block where the mission at is pretty big already. Mm-hmm. But it extends to like three, four blocks. Mm. But it gets gets packed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it's going to be now, but before the pandemic, it would be packed. Like every time I would have my family go out Mm. there or any friends, I'd be like, all right, we're not going to go during the weekend because we're not going to be able to walk. So we would go because it's Thursday through Sunday. Oh, okay. So we would go on Thursday Thursday. or we would go early because it, it, it gets crazy. I bet. Yeah. I bet. And how many vendors you said are out there? Well, before they only had like ten. Oh, okay. Now, now they're changing it all up because before we were nowhere near the Cheech, and now it's gonna be in front of the Cheech and in front of other locations. Oh as yeah, well. you have to. Yeah, you have to include yeah. so I the think Cheech in, maybe in the footprint. Be 20, 30 vendors this time. I don't know. Oh wow. Yeah. 
Dang, so it's a party out there, huh? Yeah, and it's like a it's like an artisans collective, so it's just gonna be a, a bunch of different artists that that do it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but they also have food, like, uh, but those that's a, a different thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many food vendors do they have? There's a lot. Yeah, there's like ten or twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and it's good. They're, they're... What are you laughing over there? <laughs> <laughs> i love and this is what i do i love events i love I, lo- I love going to events i'm trying to picture it in my head okay i want to i, I want to picture it in my head before i get out there we can't leave anything up to surprise yeah. i can't if you go you gotta try their hot cocoa yeah it, it see is, it's the best this is why i ask questions okay <laughs> No, they have tamales like, too who's there what's going <laughs> what do i wear what's the temperature <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be prepared. <laughs> Virgo, baby. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Uh besides that, do you have any what other dates, projects do you have coming up? Um, so this weekend on Saturday we have the closing of the art show. Okay. But I'm also gonna be at another event. Uh, so I'm double booked this weekend. Okay. Yeah, but it's going to be, that, that one's going to be fun. So it's called the Graveyard Sale. It's, oh. um, it's thrown by my friends, uh, October Village. They do a bunch of different Halloween shows throughout the year. And the cool one about this one is that everything, it's going to be like for Christmas. So everything's going to be discounted. Oh. So a lot of, Ooh. every vendor that's going to be there. It, mm-hmm. everything's going to be discounted. Oh, so it's cool. either like discontinued items or just stuff that you want to put on sale. But on top of that, it's also like a yard sale type of event. Okay. So uh, we we have so many Halloween things. So that's going to be a good place to get rid of some oh, of that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you Halloween lovers out yeah. there? Uh, where is this at again? The, that one's in Redlands. And uh, it's called Little Shop Ooh. of Ink. So it's at a tattoo shop. And Ooh, they're shop also going to be doing like Halloween tattoos that day on special. It's this weekend? Yeah. Jeez. Can- on what day? Uh, Saturday. Chico! <laughs> Why? It's from um, <laughs> 1 to 6, I believe. Can it's, they move that all that to Sunday? <laughs> can you just ask? Can we put in a request for that? <laughs> we have an event, too, that day. That's oh, you do? Yeah. yeah w- what shop. event? Uh, we're having a chef, Chef Marcella. She's a... Oh, the, for the book, right? The book yeah, the book signing. signing. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So it's on Saturday. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of things happening, uh this weekend it's good it's good we're entrepreneurs right yeah we're yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, these these months are just nuts like october november december it's like it's crazy like i, I always warn my family like you, yeah you guys aren't gonna see me <laughs> yeah. is this what happens because i i felt like i was i was pretty busy in october this was uh, odd odd for me october october was yeah. crazy and and I mean on top of that I mean like we have like my anniversary and then we had my daughter's birthday yeah so it's just a bunch of things going on back to back yeah but I, October is always the busiest for us I mean that's that's the season it's spooky you know? season right yeah yeah Rick <laughs> thanks for coming out and uh, doing this man yeah, uh, go you. ahead and and sell yourself plug it in well you don't have to sell yourself dude <laughs> you're already there um, but go ahead and tell us where we can find you and. Give us some dates. So follow us on Save the Pandas on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook if you want, but I don't really go on there. <laughs> Facebook, MySpace. And this weekend, you can find us at October Village Graveyard Cell in the city of Redlands. And then in December, you can find us at the Festival of Lights. But yeah, if you follow us on Instagram, you're going to be able to see. We are, we're always sharing where we're at. Follow Sticker Wizards if you need any stickers. You know what? I'll probably do like a little promo code. And okay. If there's, if there's anybody here that wants to order some stickers, we'll, we'll hook them up. Oh, cool. Sweet. So let us know what that uh, promo code is, and I'll put it in, okay. down in the show description. Oh, For sure. Sad. And then I'll also be at Designer Con uh, next weekend. I'll be there with Johnny Cupcakes Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet, man. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. That Thank was awesome. You. And, and then you can follow the Mind Buzz at Mind Buzz Media on YouTube. You, dude, you guys are watching. You guys are watching, and I know it. 
just hit the subscribe button. Subscribe. Subscribe. Like, comment. Show love. It's like. Really, it's, comment. Really, it's really important. It's free. Yeah. Right? It's free. Share. Share it. Share it. Share it with your mom, your bald-headed <laughs> granny. Share it with your daddy, your stepdaddy, your kids, your stepkids. No, but... um. Uh, thank you. I love you all. The Mind Bus. Bye-bye. Peace and love. You like that one, huh? Bye. You already did that one. <laughs>